Hello and welcome back. Now, it's said that the heart of a race car is its engine. And by that logic, the heart of an electronic circuit is its power supply. Now, granted, electronic circuits usually have multiple power supplies, so that makes them really weird animals. But what I want to talk to you about today is power supplies, and in particular, how to control them without using a dedicated control IC. Now, in certain cases, you don't need very good voltage precision, you don't need very good transient response, and in that case, you don't need a very good control IC. This sort of case being when working with Nixie tubes or vacuum tubes or so on, components that normally don't really need very good, very precise supply voltages. So what I want to do today is look at the heart of a Nixie clock. So I want to look at how you can build a high voltage supply without using a dedicated IC, but rather relying on the microcontroller that you have anyway to drive your clock circuitry. So if you're curious about that and much more, then keep watching. So let's start things off by looking at the microcontroller that we're going to be using today, which is the Atmega 328, which you might be more familiar with from the Arduino Uno boards. So it's this big thing right there. So the main thing that we're going to be using for the microcontroller is one of its PVM outputs. So what I'm going to be using is the 8-bit timer counter 0, of which we have a nice block diagram here. And one of the things that you might notice from this block diagram is that you can set a PVM output based on the clock, so the microcontroller quartz frequency, some registers, but there is no analog input. I mean, you could make a power supply by reading the analog input using the ADC function, calculate some sort of PVM value using software and then outputting it through this PVM block, but that usually doesn't work that well. I mean, there will be quite long delay between when you read the analog value and when you output the PVM. And also, if you want to do anything else with the microcontroller, you will have very little time to actually do this. So what I'm going to be doing is simply output a fixed PVM frequency and fixed duty cycle. So basically, my software looks something like this. So I set up my various pins as output, set up my PVM port using these two registers, and basically using this third register, I ended up having a frequency set to around 62.7 kilohertz, which is the base clock frequency of 16 megahertz divided by 255. And then the duty cycle is one minus the value of this OCR2A register divided by 255, which should equal 58.8%. Now I previously went ahead and measured this, and what I'm getting is 62.5 kilohertz instead of 62.7, and my duty cycle is 58.6 instead of 58.8. So I'm very close to what I'm supposed to be getting, and this can be down to my quartz crystals tolerance and my measurement equipment tolerance. So I'm getting pretty good values. Now, of course, I could be getting any other duty cycle I want, as long as I keep this 62 kilohertz frequency or I go to lower frequencies, or I could get a fixed 50% duty cycle and increase the frequency if I wanted to. But for now, let's leave it like this and we'll see exactly from the schematic what we actually need. So the basic schematic that I'll be using looks something like this. I'm supplying my supply from 5 volts, so the USB 5 volt that is used to supply the Arduino board. I got the basic booster stage, and of course if I want to use this to get the high voltage, like 90 volts in my case, out of it, I will definitely be going into discontinuous conduction mode. Now if you want to get the supply to work much more efficiently, you can run the supply in continuous conduction mode by using a voltage multiplication stage. Now, I did that sort of supply in these previous videos. D those two, yeah. So you can go ahead and see how those were built. Now, those used, of course, a dedicated power supply IC, but 
the power stage can work just fine using this supply also. Now we said that the microcontroller won't be using an analog input. So how do we set the output voltage? So for the boost stage we're using an n-channel MOSFET and as error amplifier and voltage reference we're using a small bipolar transistor. Now this is a very rough circuit and the reason I built it like this was for the sake of simplicity. Now you could do this more properly by using op amps and logic gates and so on but that's not really the point today. The point today is to make a supply that is as basic as possible. So how this works is you're getting the output voltage, passing it through a resistor divider to get roughly 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts, the voltage needed to open the base of the transistor. And when you activate this transistor, it will stop signal from getting into the gate of the field effect transistor. So basically, we're obtaining voltage regulation by stopping the signal getting to the gate of the switch. So let's see how this thing actually works. So what I did was run the circuit with two different loads, so no load and then 7 milliamps load, roughly the load that I'll be getting to my gas discharge tubes. And if we look at its output voltage, we can see that the voltage is pretty stable. So we get either 97.5 volts with no load and then 96.6 volts with the 7 milliamp load. So it's decently stable. Now if you want to get any other voltage out of this, basically what you need to do is play around with the resistor values. And you might also see that there's quite a lot of ripple here on the higher load variant and this can be reduced by adding a larger capacitor. Now for the sake of this simulation I use a small capacitor so that the voltage stabilizes quite quickly. In practice I'll be using a 2.2 microfarad capacitor. Now if we also try to see how efficient this circuit is we can simply run it without the step command and if we compare the input power to the output power, we can see that it's outputting 670 milliwatts and it's inputting 1.1 watt. So it's not that efficient, but this is something that we should expect from a discontinuous mode booster. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have this transistor. I have a completely different transistor for whom I couldn't find a model. So let's just see just how well this circuit actually works in real life. Now the circuit that I'm using is only slightly different than the one that we simulated. Basically the transistor is different and I added these extra ceramic capacitors on the input and, and on the output to filter out high frequency noise. But other than that the values are mostly the same. So let's go and check it out. So what I built is this little board here. Basically on one side I got all the tubes and on the other side I place the circuit. I try to do this to keep the high voltage part away from the low voltage part so you don't end up shocking yourself if you try to touch the board. Now down here I have the power supply on the left side and then the various transistors to drive each tube individually. And this entire thing is built to fit directly onto the Arduino so it's built like a little shield. And I left the wire out so that we can measure the output voltage of the power supply. So if we interconnect this thing, power it up, we see that it does work. So now let's just see how well it works. So I set up the circuit so that it has to supply both the minimum and the maximum load. So both no tubes on and all the tubes on. And we can see from the oscilloscope that the output voltage is not that stable. So it's not as good as we saw in the simulation. This has to do with the exact components that I'm using. We can also see that the voltage varies quite a lot. So at the moment, there's about 16 volts of voltage variation, which is quite a lot, but well, the circuit still works, so that's okay. Now, one of the good things about the circuit is that you cannot see any sort of overshoot or undershoot. So the voltage, even though it drops or it increases to different levels, there's no overshooting or undershooting, so it stabilizes cleanly at that level. And there are no oscillations. Now one of the downsides of the circuit is that it uses the PN junction of the transistor as a voltage reference. That means that the voltage reference isn't that stable. I mean, it's temperature dependent. And we can see that if we heat up the board a bit. So right now the board is running at around 
105 volts, maximum and 91 minimum. Now, if I decide to use a bit of hot air to heat up the circuit board, especially in the area where the transistor is, we can see that slowly the voltages are starting to decrease. And that is because the voltage drop on the transistor of the base emitter junction is smaller the hotter the transistor gets. So you can see that we went down from 105, 106, now we're at around 98 or so volts. And the hotter you will get the circuit, the more this effect will be visible. The same way, if you cool the circuit down, then the voltages will increase. So all in all, it's not a perfect circuit, but if you don't require something extremely stable, then this will be perfectly fine for your needs. Especially if you only want to supply this sort of Nixie tubes or gas discharge tubes. So all in all, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos and see you next time. Bye bye.